I think we'll start this out with the example. Hang on, the hell we're changing. I often come to the park to study Cooper. <laughs> Sorry. I tried to keep a straight face. It's not going to work. Um, antecedent interventions. Um, stuff related to those. Ta talking about the function of antecedent interventions or antecedent effects or antecedent whatever. Um, it's a function of antecedents. Hell, I don't know. Whatever the chapter to topic is. Uh, really what this is prompted by two things. Number one, we haven't covered it. Number two, um, somebody asked a question about it. Now the question confused me enough to where I had to sit down and actually read. Um, I don't, I'm not picking on the person, but it was a confusing question. So I figured we would attempt to answer it. Uh, then in attempting to answer it, really, we realized that it was really, really a confusing question. So we're just going to present it completely differently. Anyway, so for whoever it was that asked the question about antecedent stuff and cont antecedent control, here's your answer. Um, so antecedent control, first off, it's a bunch of hooey. <laughs> uh, I've been wanting to say that all day. Uh, no, and so antecedent control is... You know, if you look at Cooper, they talk about under which conditions they use the term antecedent control. Um, but I don't like the term at all because it, it gets you to think about that all the power is on the antecedent. All right, so, so let's look at contingency dependent um, antecedent control. All right, that's the, that, what, hold on. I, I, I get my, I'm trying, I want to make sure the phrases are right and matched up with what's in here. Um, so, so yes, exactly. Contingency dependent antecedent, right? So what does that mean? That really means that the antecedent isn't the thing that has the control. <laughs> it's the consequence. And what does that mean? It means that in order for you to have developed a discriminative stimulus, right? Um, it's for you to have this operant, whatever it is, um, then you have to learn what to do in a particular context. So, or in the presence of a particular stimulus. So if I tell you to answer a particular question or, or whatever it is, if I show you a swimming pool and you jump in the water and it's great, feels good, all that, you know, typical contingencies, right? It's the consequence that has the power. It's the consequence that teaches the organism about engaging in a response in the presence of a stimulus. So when we have contingent dependent antecedents, what we're really talking about is it's the learning history of the organism that is what established the power of the stimulus, of the stimulus, uh, of the S delta, sorry, not the S delta, the, uh, the SD, the discriminative stimulus, right? So without the consequence, without being reinforced for engaging in a behavior in that presence uh, of that stimulus and failing to be reinforced for behavior without it being present and so on and so forth, then you're not going to have any sort of antecedent influence. I don't even like the term control because it puts too much power on the antecedent. This is operant conditioning that we're talking about, not classical. And when we talk about operant, it's really the consequence that has the power. That's really the thing that does the modification of the responses. Now, the SD kind of signals, right? It signals that a particular response will be available. All right, so that's contingency dependent antecedents. That's the typical ones that we all think about. SDs, S deltas, blah, blah, blah. There's contingency independent antecedents. And these are really simple, folks. Motivating operations. Right? So you can change a response by messing with the motivating operations beforehand. There's no learning history required here. So if I simply uh, deprive you of food, deprive you of sleep, deprive you of water, deprive you of this, or switch it around and go the other direction, I can completely change the type of responses that you're going to engage in. Right? So as a result, that has a little, it's a, another type of antecedent control, if you will, where it's a motivating, it's a, it's a motivation manipulation, it's an antecedent intervention that's done by manipulating motivations, right, and doesn't have anything to do with your learning history, with that particular, with, with that discriminative stimulus and the response and the consequence. It's not about the three-term contingency. In that particular case, it's actually about the motivating operation. So when we talk about antecedent interventions, we can do a couple of things. We can talk about um, dependent ones and independent ones that are independent of the of the contingencies right um, so the dependent ones again those are about your learning history what you've done in the past uh, and the independent ones are about motivating operations so I hope that helps it's um, an interesting little topic and there's more to read and talk about on it but that's enough for this video 
Ladies and gentlemen, are you tired of studying for your exams? Are you tired of flipping pages through Cooper? Are you tired of reading endless paragraphs? Are you tired of reading the same paragraph over and over again and you still can't figure out what the main point is? If you're tired of even reading the first sentence of that paragraph, maybe you should join us. It's a psych or cram session, and they're coming up soon.